Hi, this is Dr. Mike Yuan. I thought I'd spend a few minutes sharing with you a thought that just came to me, which I've titled The Secret Sauce to Yang Tai Chi's Success in the World. You know, there's been hundreds, if not thousands, of methodologies and techniques created, but never make it to the level of Yang Tai Chi, which after less than 200 years has earned the ranking of China's Guobao, China's country's treasure. And then we see the proliferation of what's estimated to be 250 million Tai Chi practitioners in the world today, that number growing, the majority of which no doubt is Yang style. And it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about Tai Chi as a recreational exercise or the more hardcore Tai Chi practitioners. There's something behind the name Yang Tai Chi itself that makes even instructors who have only trained in part of the system want to adopt the Yang family as their label, brand, and identity. Completely understandable from a marketing point of view. But I want to go further, having myself met Grandmaster Yang Shoujong, the fourth generation patriarch and eldest son of the Yang family tradition. It was a quality that he bore that I've been endeavoring to convey in this YouTube channel, but also in the private Advanced Yang Tai Chi Corrections Facebook group. In being in conversation with so many Yang Tai Chi practitioners throughout the world, through this Facebook vehicle. The inquiry has deepened to where people really want to know what the original standard was. From a modern, rational standpoint, we're entitled to have proof in terms of history, but more importantly, in terms of whether the method itself can yield the greatness that surrounds the Yang tradition. So I felt before launching the actual training, that reveals not well-known aspects of the Yang family tradition and method that I had personal access to. I needed to touch upon this secret sauce and explain that it's what's behind my differentiation between qi energy, which is the focus of most cultivation today, and qi etheric, which there's a Chinese term for, and which Grandmaster Yang, in his verbal transmission to me in 1981, gave me a sense for what was cultivated in the Yang family tradition. I, I call it a power of presence that is on the invisible realm. Now, if you think of the hundreds, if not thousands, of different kinds of worship and religion, the names of only a certain few would continue to proliferate. This is beyond any human controlled factors. And I, I'd like you to just take this bigger picture of the religions and apply the same rules to the extraordinary success and sustainability of the Yang Tai Chi in the world. It's only going to get bigger with time. It's already established deep enough roots within Chinese history, within this short amount of time. So in my visioning, I can only imagine back to Yang Luchan and what that special thing was, what that secret sauce was that he grasped, that made his new invention so powerful. Every self-cultivation practice from the East talks about qi, qi energy, I mean. So. That's not what would make the Yang school so successful, because everyone's doing that. And it's only when I tune into Yang Shoujong's way of being that I've spent a lot of time describing in my episodes and other videos on this channel that we come up with a plausible reason. And that reason lies in an etheric presence. There's actually a term that Yang Shoujong gave me, which I'm holding until there's a big enough audience to assure me that it's not going to be taken the wrong way. 
But that term really points to a path of greatness that Yang Luchan passed all the way successfully to Yang Shouzhong, and that Yang Chengfu held, being the main proliferator of the Yang family name. So it goes beyond health. It even goes beyond fighting ability, because there are other outstanding fighters in the world from all different styles. There's something more. And that was the secret sauce that was that is developed through the method, but that is not focused on hardly at all in the modern Yang Tai Chi teachings. It's still reduced to individual power. And the power that Yang Shou Jung conveyed to me and role modeled in his presence went beyond him and bordered on what I would call the mysteries. He was a mystery person. And I have to keep saying, I'm not sure how successful he was in conveying this to even his closest next generations. I've been lucky enough to have been exposed to other versions of this within not only Chinese culture, but other world cultures as well. So this idea of Yang Tai Chi being an expression of the deep mysteries, specifically the deep feminine mysteries of ancient China. This needs to be the emphasis. And I factor all of this in to the trainings. The secret sauce is embedded in the actual methods that I've recovered. And for that reason, the version of Yang Tai Chi that I teach not only references the actual Yang family members who I knew, the methods that I've trained, but it references this other side, this mystery that you can take and reflect back to yourself to grasp the mystery of your own destiny and existence. Spiritual, but it doesn't have to be couched in spiritual terms, so to speak. The personal power, the power of presence of Grandmaster Yang Shoujong, I firmly believe is a continuation of that which Yang Luchan intuited and innovated into his very different Tai Chi method compared to the Chen style, which purportedly he learned from. And there's hardly any credit given to this differentiation. And I'd like to just underscore here in this video that that should be one of the main topics of interest of any Yang Tai Chi practitioner, no matter what level, because it's on the etheric that the real key to the practice lies. This is Dr. Mike. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.